So you just picked up a copy of Farming Simulator 22 and you want to become a digital farmer. Well, exactly how do you do that? Let me show you. How's it going, everybody? Driver 53 here. And today I'm going to show you everything that you need to know about Combine Harvester. So the first thing you're going to load into your map. I'm on Elm Creek here, and this one has a tutorial. If you don't want to do the tutorial, I can take you through and show you all the steps that you're going to need to know. But I highly recommend doing that tutorial. It's going to give you a really basic overview of everything that you need to know to get started here in your farming simulator journey. So the first thing you're going to notice is that you are here on Elm Creek. You're standing on the porch and you've got some crop right here that you need to go ahead and harvest. Now, this is wheat. Exactly. How do we do that? Well, you're going to go over to your harvester right here. Now, this is the one that is base game loaded into the map for you. doesn't matter which map you start on. Most maps are going to have a harvester for you to be able to use. So how do you get in here and start this thing up? Well, the first thing you're going to want to do is come around here to this side or right in the front, and then you're going to want to hit square, and that's going to get you into your harvester. You're going to notice that it automatically starts up and down at the bottom of the screen. You can see a message that says attach. It's your X button right here. What that's going to do is it's going to bring your header up and attach it on to your harvester. Now, what you're going to need to do is toggle to your actual combine itself and not the header in the top left hand corner of the screen. You can see that you've got some icons there that look like a harvester and a header. Hit your triangle button that's going to move it to the back. Now you are in control of your harvester itself. Hold your L1 and your X button, and that is actually going to unfold it for you. Now you're ready to start harvesting. Hold L1 again, press square. It's going to lower the header down. It's going to rev up the RPMs, and now you're able to start harvesting. Pretty awesome. So all you got to do, hold your R2, and it's going to go in a perfectly straight line for you. Now, as you can see, you've got some straw that's coming out here on the ground. I've got some really important information for you here in just a minute on this, but that's as basic and simple as it is everybody once you get down here to the end you can raise it up if you want to all you have to do is turn off your harvester or you could just leave it running and then just swing around and line it back up steering is pretty simple it's going to be your left and right on your left analog stick and the um, camera is the right analog stick that's how i'm moving this around so I, like i said all I have to do is spin this thing around. Now, on some of these, the turning radius is not that great, so you're going to have to back up. Do that with your L2. Line back up, and then you are good to go to start your second pass right here. Now, like I said, if you decide that you wanted to actually stop the harvester, all you have to do is hold L1 again, press square. It raises up, and it stops. You want to get inside the cab all you have to do is press down on your r3 and it's going to take you inside the cab now this is a little bit more difficult view but it really lets you get super immersive in the game i like to do it every once in a while but this one right here is pretty well the standard one that i use all of the time now a really important thing that you're gonna need to know Right now, I am able to drive over these crops and not have to worry about destroying them. Well, I've changed my settings. Let me show you how to get there really quickly. Here in your game settings, you can see on the left-hand side, it's the tractor with the gear on it. What you need to do is come down here until you see crop destruction. You want that to be off if you want to run over your crops without any destruction. If I turn this on... Well, guess what? Now I'm destroying my crop and I'm losing money because it's not going in the harvester for me to be able to sell. So be very, very careful about that. Another setting that I want to go over really quick is actually going to be how you keep your engine running the entire time. Base game here, when you first load in, the engine is just going to only run whenever you get inside the vehicle. What you need to do is come down here to automatic engine start in your game settings. Again, turn this on or off. On means that it only turns on whenever you are in the vehicle. It shuts off anytime you get out. You want it to be off. We'll check out this. All I got to do, get out of my vehicle, and it's still running. I'll come around here to the other side, and you can see that this thing is still running. You got the exhaust up there at the top. And you might be wondering, how do you actually turn on and off your harvester? Well, it's pretty simple. All you need to do is make sure that you have automatic engine start turned off. Then you're going to press your R1 and your square. That's going to lower the RPMs, turn it off completely. If you want to turn it back on, hold R1, hit square again, and now your RPMs come back up and your harvester is turned on. Now, I mentioned straw a while ago. There's only going to be three crops in base game that are going to give you straw. Those are going to be your barley right here. You've got your wheat right here 
and oats right here. All right. So the way that you're going to be able to turn on or off how to get this straw swath, sometimes you don't want it at all. You're going to want to go into your general settings and turn on your help window. All right. So on and now you can see up in the top left hand corner, I've got this this menu control over here, and it shows me exactly what buttons I need to press to be able to do what I need to do. I highly recommend leaving this turned on when you first start the game, but to get your straw swath on and off, you got to make sure that your vehicle is actually running. So as you can see right now, it is running. And then I'm going to go ahead and press my L1 and right on the D pad that is going to enable straight straw swath or disable straw swath, whatever is showing up is the opposite of what it is. So if I want to disable it, all right, I'm going to go ahead and start my header right here. And you can see that now, instead of putting down a straw swath, it's just going to throw the straw everywhere. And I'm not going to have anything that I can actually pick back up. So once again, if I want to enable it, I need to hit L1 and right on my D-pad. And now as I'm going, I'm going to be able to get that straw swath. Now there's some other crops too, that are going to be able to use the same header, a grain header, but they're not going to give you any straw on a regular base game map. Those are going to be your soybeans, your sorghum, and your canola. And if I try to enable my straw swath, I'm going to get a message that straw is not available for this crop. All right, so there's nothing that I can do. It's always going to put down a wide path right here. Nothing that I can pick up. Now, this is in base game only. There are some maps that you are going to be able to do this on. It should tell you in the description of the mod map. And if you're interested in mods, check out my first video in this series. Take a look at how to install mods on your console. And speaking of headers, here is your, all your different variations of your grain headers. You could have just a regular one like this that you have to put on a trailer like this right here. Or you can get ones that already have wheels attached to them and you can just pull it around behind your harvester or your favorite tractor. And here are your crops that you're going to use those with. It is your corn or maize in some parts of the country and your sunflowers right here. If you're using one of these fold up headers right here, it's pretty simple to activate. All you have to do, attach to it, and then it makes sure that you are on the header itself up in your icons, hold your L1, and then hold your X, and that's going to unfold it for you. The same thing is going to apply if you're using one of those uh, headers with the built-in trailer. Same thing. Once you attach it, you need to fold that arm up underneath of it, do the exact same thing. Now, can you drop these things with it already on here without it being folded up? Uh, yes, you can. You absolutely can. And it doesn't hurt it at all. Pretty simple. You're going to be able to pull right back up to it. Hit your X and boom, there you go. So everything that I was looking at there was a base game piece of equipment. Here are some mods that you could get, guys, to really change up your combine experience here in the game. You got everything from an old iron New Holland and Massey Ferguson to some really interesting new, new equipment here. You've got the Kloss US versions right here, whenever they partnered up with Caterpillar. You've got some John Deere's with some flags on it, even some Case IH with some flags. Guys, there are so many mods that you can get to really change up and, and pretend like you're in different parts of the world. I mean, there's Kloss, you've got, I mean, just all kinds, Massey Ferguson, Ideals, you've got some Challengers out there, just all kinds of different stuff. I highly recommend taking a look at your mod hub and checking a look, taking a look at all of my um, videos that I do, mod showcases in my playlist, tip, tricks, and testing. That is going to be a great place to check out any mods that I have highlighted. You're definitely going to want to go there and check them out. And those were mods if you just want to stay kind of normal farming. But if you really want to get extreme and really play like a PC player... Yeah, you definitely need to check this out. The Colossus 9000. We've also got the Reaper 2000. This one right here, I love it because you're able to do so much customization on this thing. And it goes 77 miles an hour. So you're, you're going to be able to get from one side of the map to the other in a very, very short amount of time. You've got headers that come along with this. I mean, you could do all kinds of color customization on these things. Now, you could also get some headers that are a little bit, I mean, I won't say they're cheaty. But this is like twice as wide as what you kind of normal would see. Now, this is like a prototype of a real life uh, piece of equipment. This thing, Casello Pack, I think is how you call it. Um, it's, it's insane, guys. Definitely check out the Mod Hub. You're going to be able to find some really, really cool stuff in there that is really going to let you 
kind of fast farm, if you want to say. And I, if you guys are looking for some fast farming information, definitely check out all my playlists. I've got a ton of stuff in there showing console players how you can go faster, improve your efficiency, save money, make more money, all different things like that. That's what I really, really focus on here in this channel. But I wanted to show you guys everything that you're going to need to know. There's one more thing that you need to know about your harvesters. And that is that you need to select a header for your harvester that, that matches it and complements it pretty well. Now, this thing really, I mean, it, it's insane. It's your widest John Deere header that you've got in base game. And this is your smallest harvester, the Rossell Mash Nova 330. We go ahead and hop in here. And if I pull up to this thing, you're going to see that it, it attaches. It absolutely attaches. You can mix your different brands together without any problem. Now, the first problem that you're going to encounter is if I try and turn this thing on. Now, I'm going to press my R2 and try and go as fast as I can here. But as you can see, it's just barely moving along. And the reason is because it doesn't have enough horsepower to sustain the header. So you need to make sure that you get a header that is paired up with your harvester on the horsepower that it has. You can't do any of these crazy combinations right here on console. At least it's just, it's not going to work. Now, another thing that you really need to keep in mind, yes, you may want to use these really, really wide headers, but whenever you put your tipper arm out, your, your auger arm out, it, it's not going to work if you're trying to dump into a trailer. Let me go and show you exactly how you're going to do that. What you need to do is hold your L1 again, and then press down on your D pad. That's going to bring out your auger arm. Now, as you can see, I'm, I'm not barely over halfway here. So my trailer, it's going to be very, very difficult to get that maneuvered in here. And if I'm trying to do it on the go, it's not going to work at all. So make sure that your auger on your harvester is wider than what your header is. So now that you get your harvesting figured out, you're going to be able to start filling up your tank in your harvester, also known as a hopper. Down in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see that it's going to be represented as a percentage. Well, when that gets to 100%, what are you going to do? Well, you need to unload it into a trailer or a grain cart. 